Gregory Bateson was an English anthropologist, social scientist, linguist, visual anthropologist, semiotician and cyberneticist whose work intersected that of many other fields. In the 1940s he helped extend systems theory and cybernetics to the social and behavioral sciences. He spent the last decade of his life developing a meta science of epistemology to bring together the various early forms of systems theory developing in different fields of science. His writings include Steps to an Ecology of Mind and Mind and Nature. Angel's Fear was co authored by his daughter Mary Catherine Bateson. Bateson was born in Grantchester in Cambridgeshire, England on May 9, 1904. He was the third and youngest son of Caroline Beatrice Durham and the distinguished geneticist William Bateson. He was named Gregory after Gregor Mendel, the Austrian monk who founded the modern science of genetics. The younger Bateson attended Charterhouse School from 1917 to 1921, obtained a Bachelor of Arts in Biology at St. John's College, Cambridge in 1925, and continued at Cambridge from 1927 to 1929. Bateson lectured in linguistics at the University of Sydney in 1928. From 1931 to 1937 he was a Fellow of St. John's College, Cambridge, spent the years before World War II in the South Pacific in New Guinea and Bali doing anthropology. During 1936 Euro 1950 he was married to Margaret Mead. At that time he applied his knowledge to the war effort before moving to the United States. In Palo Alto, California, Bateson and his colleagues Donald Jackson, J. Haley and John H. Weakland developed the double-bind theory. Bateson's interest in systems theory and cybernetics forms a thread running through his work. He was one of the original members of the core group of the Macy Conferences in Cybernetics, and the later set on group processes, where he represented the social and behavioral sciences. Bateson was interested in the relationship of these fields to epistemology. His association with the editor and author Stuart Brand helped to widen his influence. From the 1970s until his last years, a broader audience of university students and educated people working in many fields came to know his thought. In 1956 he became a naturalized citizen of the United States. Bateson was a member of William Owen Thompson's Lindy's Farn Association. In the 1970s, he taught at the Humanistic Psychology Institute in San Francisco, and in 1972 joined the faculty of Craig College at the University of California, Santa Cruz. He was elected a Fellow of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences in 1976. In 1976, California Governor Jerry Brown appointed Bateson to the Board of Regents of the University of California, in which position he served until his death. He died on Independence Day, 1980, in the guest house of the San Francisco Zen Center. Personal life, Bateson's life, according to Lipset, was greatly affected by the death of his two brothers. John Bateson, the eldest of the three, was killed in World War I. Martin Bateson, the second brother, was then expected to follow in his father's footsteps as a scientist, but came into conflict with his father over his ambition to become a poet and playwright. The resulting stress, combined with a disappointment in love, resulted in Martin's public suicide by gunshot under the statue of Antirus in Piccadilly Circus on April 22, 1922, which was John's birthday. After this event, which transformed a private family tragedy into public scandal, all William and Beatrice's ambitious expectations fell on Gregory, their only surviving son. Bateson's first marriage, in 1936, was to American cultural anthropologist Margaret Mead. Bateson and Mead had a daughter, Mary Catherine Bateson, who also became an anthropologist. He separated from Mead in 1947, and they were divorced in 1950. In 1951 he married his second wife Elizabeth Betty Sumner, the daughter of the Episcopalian Bishop of Chicago, Walter Taylor Sumner. They had a son, John Sumner Bateson, as well as twins who died shortly after birth in 1953. Bateson and Sumner were divorced in 1957, after which Bateson married his third wife, the therapist and social worker Lois Kamak, in 1961. They had one daughter, Nora Bateson. Bateson was a lifelong atheist, as his family had been for several generations. Philosophy, 
where others might see a set of inexplicable details, Bates in perceived symbol relationships. In From Versailles to Cybernetics, Bateson argues that the history of the 20th century can be perceived as the history of a malfunctioning relationship. In his view, the Treaty of Versailles exemplifies a whole pattern of human relationships based on betrayal and hate. He therefore claims that the Treaty of Versailles and the development of cybernetics are Euro, which for him represented the possibility of improved relationships a Euro are the only two anthropologically important events of the 20th century. Work equals WWII and Office of Strategic Services career equals, although initially reluctant to join the intelligence services, Bateson served in OSS during World War II along with dozens of other anthropologists. He spent much of the war designing black propaganda radio broadcasts. He was deployed on covert operations in Burma and Thailand, and worked in China, India, and Ceylon as well. Bateson used his theory of schismogenesis to help foster discord among enemy fighters. He was upset by his wartime experience and disagreed with his wife over whether science should be applied to social planning or used only to foster understanding rather than action. Equals early work, New Guinea and Bali equals, Bates on a Euro unregistered trademark s beginning years as an anthropologist were spent floundering, lost without a specific objective in mind. He began first with a trip to New Guinea, spurred by mentor A.C. Haddon. His goal, as suggested by Haddon, was to explore the effects of contact between the Sepik natives and whites. Unfortunately for Bateson, his time spent with the baning of New Guinea was halted and difficult. The baning turned out to be secretive and excluded him from many aspects of their society. On more than one occasion he was tricked into missing communal activities, and they held out on their religion. He left them, frustrated. He next studied the Sulka, another native population of New Guinea. Although the Sulka were dramatically different from the Baining and their culture much more visible to the observer, he felt their culture was dying, which left him feeling dispirited and discouraged. He experienced more success with the Ayat Mull, another indigenous people of the Sepik River region of New Guinea. He would always return to the idea of communications and relations or interactions between and among people. The observations he made of the Ayat Mull allowed him to develop his concept of schismogenesis. He studied the Navan, an honorific ceremony among the Ayat Mull, still continued today, that celebrates first-time cultural achievements. The ceremony entails many antics that are normally forbidden during everyday social life. For example, Men and women reverse and exaggerate gender roles. Men dress in women's skirts, and women dress in men's attire and ornaments. Additionally, certain categories of female kin smear mud in the faces of other relatives, beat them with sticks, and hurl bawdy insults. Mothers may drop to the ground so their celebrated child walks over them. And during a male rite, a mother's brother may slide his buttocks down the leg of his honored sister's son, a complex gesture of masculine birthing, pride, and insult, rarely performed before women, that brings the honored sister son to tears. Bateson suggested the influence of a circular system of causation, and proposed that women watched for the spectacular performances of the men, and there can be no reasonable doubt that the presence of an audience is a very important factor in shaping the men's behavior. In fact, it is probable that the men are more exhibitionistic because the women admire their performances. Conversely, there can be no doubt that the spectacular behavior is a stimulus which summons the audience together, promoting in the women the appropriate behavior. In short, the behavior of person X affects person Y, and the reaction of person Y to person X's behavior will then affect person X's behavior, which in turn will affect person Y, and so on. Bateson called this the vicious circle. He then discerned two models of schismogenesis, symmetrical and complementary. Symmetrical relationships are those in which the two parties are equals, competitors, such as in sports. Complementary relationships feature an unequal balance, such as dominance-submission, or exhibitionism-spectatorship. Bates on a Euro unregistered trademark s experiences with the Ayat Mull led him to publish a book in 1936 titled Navan, a survey of the problems suggested by a composite picture of the culture of a New Guinea tribe drawn from three points of view. 
the book proved to be a watershed in anthropology and modern social science. Until Bateson published Naven, most anthropologists assumed a realist approach to studying culture, in which one simply described social reality. Bateson's book argued that this approach was naive, since an anthropologist's account of a culture was always and fundamentally shaped by whatever theory the anthropologist employed to define and analyze the data. To think otherwise, stated Bateson, was to be guilty of what Alfred North Whitehead called the fallacy of misplaced concreteness. There was no singular or self-evident way to understand the eye at Mulnavon Wright. Instead, Bateson analyzed the right from three unique points of view, sociological, ethological, and ideological. The book, then, was not a presentation of anthropological analysis but an epistemological account that explored the nature of anthropological analysis itself. The sociological point of view sought to identify how the ritual helped bring about social integration. In the 1930s, most anthropologists understood marriage rules to regularly ensure that social groups renewed their alliances. But I at Mull, argued Bateson, had contradictory marriage rules. Marriage, in other words, could not guarantee that a marriage between two clans would at some definite point in the future recur. Instead, Bateson continued, the Naven Wright filled this function by regularly ensuring exchanges of food, valuables and sentiment between mothers' brothers and their sisters' children, or between separate lineages. Naven, from this angle, held together the different social groups of each village into a unified whole. The ethological point of view interpreted the ritual in terms of the conventional emotions associated with normative male and female behavior, which Bateson called ethos. In Ayat Mal culture, observed Bateson, men and women live different emotional lives. For example, women were rather submissive and took delight in the achievement of others. Men fiercely competitive and flamboyant. During the ritual, however, men celebrated the achievement of their nieces and nephews while women were given ritual license to act raucously. In effect, Naven allowed men and women to experience momentarily the emotional lives of each other, and thereby to achieve a level of psychological integration. The third and final point of view, the ideological, was the least successful. Here Bateson endeavored to correlate the organization structure of the Naven ceremony with the habitual patterns of Ayat Mull thought. Much later, Bateson would harness the very same idea to the development of the double-bind theory of schizophrenia. In the epilogue to the book, Bateson was clear, the writing of this book has been an experiment, or rather a series of experiments, in methods of thinking about anthropological material. That is to say, his overall point was not to describe Ayat Mal culture of the Naven ceremony but to explore how different modes of analysis, using different premises and analytic frameworks, could lead to different explanations of the same Soki cultural phenomenon. Not only did Bateson's approach reshape fundamentally the anthropological approach to culture, but the Naven rite itself has remained a locus classicus in the discipline. In fact, the meaning of the ritual continues to inspire anthropological analysis. Bateson next traveled to Bali with his new wife Margaret Mead. They studied the people of the Balinese village Bajongjid. Here, Lipset states, in the short history of ethnographic fieldwork, film was used both on a large scale and as the primary research tool. Indeed, Bateson took 25,000 photographs of their Balinese subjects. Bateson discovered that the people of Bajongjid raised their children very unlike children raised in Western societies. Instead of attention being paid to a child who was displaying a climax of emotion, Balinese mothers would ignore them. Bateson notes, the child responds to, a mother's, advances with either affection or temper, but the response falls into a vacuum. In Western cultures, such sequences lead to small climaxes of love or anger, but not so in Bali. At the moment when a child throws its arms around the mother's neck or bursts into tears, the mother's attention wanders. This model of stimulation and refusal was also seen in other areas of the culture. Bateson later described the style of Balinese relations as stasis instead of schismogenesis. Their interactions were muted, and did not follow the schismogenetic process because they did not often escalate competition, dominance, or submission. After Bali, 
Bateson and Mead returned to the Sepik River in 1938, and settled into the village of Tampnum, where Bateson spent three days in the 1920s. They aimed to replicate the Balinese project on the relationship between children raising and temperament, and between conventions of the body a euro such as pose, grimace, holding infants, facial expressions, etc. A euro reflected wider cultural themes and values. Bateson snapped some 10,000 black and white photographs, and Mead typed thousands of pages of field notes. But Bateson and Mead never published anything substantial from this research. Bateson's encounter with Mead on this epic river and their life together in Bali is described in Mead's autobiography Blackberry Winter, My Earlier Years. Catherine's birth in New York on December 8, 1939 is recounted in Chapter 18. Equals double bind equals. In 1956 in Palo Alto, Bateson and his colleagues Donald Jackson, J. Haley, and John Weakland articulated a related theory of schizophrenia as stemming from double-bind situations. The double-bind refers to a communication paradox described first in families with a schizophrenic member. The first place where double-binds were described was according to Bateson, in Samuel Butler's The Way of All Flesh. Full double-bind requires several conditions to be met. The victim of double bind receives contradictory injunctions or emotional messages on different levels of communication. No meta communication is possible. A euro, for example, asking which of the two messages is valid or describing the communication as making no sense. The victim cannot leave the communication field. Failing to fulfill the contradictory injunctions is punished. The strange behavior and speech of schizophrenics was explained by Bates and Ayal as an expression of this paradoxical situation, and was seen in fact as an adaptive response, which should be valued as a cathartic and transformative experience. The double bind was originally presented as an explanation of part of the etiology of schizophrenia. Currently, it is considered to be more important as an example of Bateson's approach to the complexities of communication which is what he understood it to be equals the role of somatic change in evolution equals, according to Merriam-Webster's dictionary the term somatic is basically defined as the body or body cells of change distinguished from germplasm or psyche mind. Bateson writes about how the actual physical changes in the body occur within evolutionary processes. He describes this through the introduction of the concept of economics of flexibility. In his conclusion he makes seven statements or theoretical positions which may be supported by his ideology. The first is the idea that although environmental stresses have theoretically been believed to guide or dictate the changes in the soma, the introduction of new stresses do not automatically result in the physical changes necessary for survival as suggested by original evolutionary theory. In fact the introduction of these stresses can greatly weaken the organism. An example that he gives is the sheltering of a sick person from the weather or the fact that someone who works in an office would have a hard time working as a rock climber and vice versa. The second position states that though the economics of flexibility has a logical structure each successive demand upon flexibility fractioning the set of available possibilities. This means that theoretically speaking each demand or variable creates a new set of possibilities. Bateson's third conclusion is that the genotypic change commonly makes demand upon the adjustive ability of the soma. This, he states, is the commonly held belief among biologists although there is no evidence to support the claim. Added demands are made on the soma by sequential genotypic modifications is the fourth position. Through this he suggests the following three expectations, the idea that organisms that have been through recent modifications will be delicate the belief that these organisms will become progressively harmful or dangerous. That over time these new Euro OE breeds a Euro will become more resistant to the stresses of the environment and change in genetic traits. The fifth theoretical position which Bateson believes is supported by his data is that characteristics within an organism that have been modified due to environmental stresses may coincide with genetically determined attributes. His sixth position is that it takes less economic flexibility to create somatic change than it does to cause a genotypic modification. The seventh and final theory he believes to be supported is the idea that in rare occasions there will be populations whose changes will not be in accordance with the thesis presented within this paper. According to Bateson, 
None of these positions could be tested but he called for the creation of a test which could possibly prove or disprove the theoretical positions suggested within. Equals ecological anthropology and cybernetics equals, in his book Steps to an Ecology of Mind, Bateson applied cybernetics to the field of ecological anthropology and the concept of homeostasis. He saw the world as a series of systems containing those of individuals, societies and ecosystems. Within each system is found competition and dependency. Each of these systems has adaptive changes which depend upon feedback loops to control balance by changing multiple variables. Bateson believed that these self-correcting systems were conservative by controlling exponential slippage. He saw the natural ecological system as innately good as long as it was allowed to maintain homeostasis and that the key unit of survival in evolution was an organism and its environment. Bateson also viewed that all three systems of the individual, society and ecosystem were altogether a part of one supreme cybernetic system that controls everything instead of just interacting systems. This supreme cybernetic system is beyond the self of the individual and could be equated to what many people refer to as God, though Bateson referred to it as mind. While mind is a cybernetic system, it can only be distinguished as a whole and not parts. Bateson felt mind was imminent in the messages and pathways of the supreme cybernetic system. He saw the root of system collapses as a result of Occidental or Western epistemology. According to Bateson, Consciousness is the bridge between the cybernetic networks of individual, society and ecology and the mismatch between the systems due to improper understanding will result in the degradation of the entire supreme cybernetic system or mind. Bateson thought that consciousness as developed through Occidental epistemology was at direct odds with mind. At the heart of the matter is scientific hubris. Bateson argues that Occidental epistemology perpetuates a system of understanding which is purpose or means to an end driven. Purpose controls attention and narrows perception, thus limiting what comes into consciousness and therefore limiting the amount of wisdom that can be generated from the perception. Additionally Occidental epistemology propagates the false notion that man exists outside mind and this leads man to believe in what Bateson calls the philosophy of control based upon false knowledge. Bateson presents Occidental epistemology as a method of thinking that leads to a mindset in which man exerts an autocratic rule over all cybernetic systems. In exerting his autocratic rule man changes the environment to suit him and in doing so he unbalances the natural cybernetic system of controlled competition and mutual dependency. The purpose-driven accumulation of knowledge ignores the supreme cybernetic system and leads to the eventual breakdown of the entire system. Bateson claims that man will never be able to control the whole system because it does not operate in a linear fashion and if man creates his own rules for the system, he opens himself up to becoming a slave to the self-made system due to the non-linear nature of cybernetics. Lastly, man's technological prowess combined with his scientific hubris gives him the potential to irrevocably damage and destroy the supreme cybernetic system, instead of just disrupting the system temporarily until the system can self-correct. Bateson argues for a position of humility and acceptance of the natural cybernetic system instead of scientific arrogance as a solution. He believes that humility can come about by abandoning the view of operating through consciousness alone. Consciousness is only one way in which to obtain knowledge and without complete knowledge of the entire cybernetic system disaster is inevitable. The limited conscious must be combined with the unconscious in complete synthesis. Only when thought and emotion are combined in whole is man able to obtain complete knowledge. He believed that religion and art are some of the few areas in which a man is acting as a whole individual in complete consciousness. By acting with this greater wisdom of the supreme cybernetic system as a whole man can change his relationship to mind from one of schism, in which he is endlessly tied up in constant competition, to one of complementarity. Bateson argues for a culture that promotes the most general wisdom and is able to flexibly change within the supreme cybernetic system. Equals other terms used by Bateson equals, abduction. Used by Bateson to refer to a third scientific methodology which was central to his own holistic and qualitative approach. Refers to a method of comparing patterns of relationship, and their symmetry or asymmetry, especially in complex organic systems. 
The term was originally coined by American philosopher logician Charles Sanders Park, who used it to refer to the process by which scientific hypotheses are generated. Criteria of mind Mind is an aggregate of interacting parts or components. The interaction between parts of mind is triggered by difference. Mental process requires collateral energy. Mental process requires circular chains of determination. In mental process the effects of difference are to be regarded as transforms of the difference which preceded them. The description and classification of these processes of transformation discloses a hierarchy of logical types imminent in the phenomena. Creatura and Polaroma Borrowed from Carl Jung who applied these Gnostic terms in his Seven Sermons to the Dead. Like the Hindu term Maya, the basic idea captured in this distinction is the meaning and organization are projected onto the world. Polaroma refers to the non-living world that is undifferentiated by subjectivity. Creature for the living world, subject to perceptual difference, distinction, and information. Due to a learning. A term he coined in the 1940s referring to the organization of learning, or learning to learn, schismogenesis a euro the emergence of divisions within social groups. Information a euro Bateson defined information as a difference which makes a difference. For Bateson, information in fact mediated Alfred Quartz of schisma par euro territory relation, and thereby resolved, according to Bateson, the mind body problem. Equals continuing extensions of Bateson's work equals, his daughter Mary Catherine Bateson published a joint biography of her parents in 1984. Bateson's legacy was reintroduced to new audiences by his daughter the filmmaker Nora Bateson, with the release of An Ecology of Mind, a documentary that premiered at the Vancouver International Film Festival. This film was selected as the audience favorite with the Morton Marcus Documentary Feature Award at the 2011 Santa Cruz Film Festival, and honored with the 2011 John Culkin Award for Outstanding Praxis in the Field of Media Ecology by the Media Ecology Association. The Bateson Idea Group initiated a web presence in October 2010. The group collaborated with the American Society for Cybernetics for a joint meeting in July 2012 at the Asylum Conference Grounds in California. See also Publications, Books, Bateson, Gregory An Analysis of the Film Hitler Junjquex New York OCLC 41057404 Bateson, G. Navin a survey of the problem suggested by a composite picture of the culture of a New Guinea tribe drawn from three points of view. Stanford University Press. ISBN 0-8047-0520-8. Bateson, G. Mead, M. Balinese Character, A Photographic Analysis. New York Academy of Sciences. ISBN 0-89072-780-5. Ryush, J. Bateson, G. Communication, The Social Matrix of Psychiatry. W. W. Norton and Company. ISBN 978-1-4128-0614-5. Retrieved March 19, 2013. Bateson, G. Steps to an Ecology of Mind, Collected Essays in Anthropology, Psychiatry, Evolution, and Epistemology. Chicago. Illinois, University of Chicago Press. ISBN 0-226-03905-6. Retrieved March 19, 2013. Bateson, G. Mind and Nature, A Necessary Unity. Hampton Press. ISBN 1-57273-434-5. Published posthumously. Bateson, G. Bateson, M. C. Angel's Fear, Towards an Epistemology of the Sacred. University of Chicago Press. ISBN 978-0-553-34581-0. Published posthumously. Bateson, G. Donaldson, Rodney E. A. Sacred Unity, Further Steps to an Ecology of Mind. HarperCollins. ISBN 0-06-250100-3. Articles, A Selection, 1956, Bateson, The Message This Is Play. Imbi Schaffner, 
Group Processes, Transactions of the Second Conference New York, Josiah Macy, Jr. Foundation, 1956, Bateson, G., Jackson, D.D., J. Haley and Weakland, J., Toward a Theory of Schizophrenia, Behavioral Science, Volume 1, 1956, 251 a Euro 264. Bateson, G. and Jackson, D. Some Varieties of Pathogenic Organization. In Disorders of Communication. Research Publications 42, 270 a Euro 283. 1978, Malcolm, J., The One-Way Mirror. Ostensibly about family therapist Salvador Minuchin, essay digresses for several pages into a meditation on Bateson's role in the origin of family therapy, his intellectual pedigree, and the impasse he reached with J. Haley. Documentary film, Trance and Dance in Bali, a short documentary film shot by cultural anthropologist Margaret Mead and Gregory Bateson in the 1930s, but it was not released until 1952. In 1999 the film was deemed culturally significant by the United States Library of Congress and selected for preservation in the National Film Registry. An Ecology of Mind, a documentary film shot by Nora Bateson and released in 2010 through the Impact Media Group, includes segments from Bateson's early films made in Bali. Trivia, Bateson is often given as the origin of the story concerning the replacement of the huge oak beams of the main hall of New College. Oxford with trees planted on college land several hundred years previously for that express purpose. Although the precise facts do not entirely match the story, it is commonly cited as an admirable example of planning ahead. The character of Albert James in Tim Park's 2008 novel Dreams of Rivers and Seas is loosely based on Bateson. Bateson studied with A.C. Haddon but never completed his penthouse D. References Sources and further reading Lipset, David. Gregory Bateson, The Legacy of a Scientist. Beacon Press. 1982, Stephen Nachmanovich, Gregory Bateson, Old Men Ought to Be Explorers, Coevolution Quarterly, Fall 1982. 1992, Gregory Bateson's Theory of Mind, Practical Applications to Pedagogy by Lawrence Bale. November 1992. Article The Double Bind, the Intimate Tie Between Behavior and Communication by Patrice Guillaume, 1995, Paper Gregory Bateson, Cybernetics and the Social Behavioral Sciences by Lawrence S. Bale, Ph.D., first published in, Cybernetics and Human Knowing, a Journal of Second Order Cybernetics and Cybersemiotics, Volume 3 No. 1, pages 27 a Euro 45. 1996, Paradox and Absurdity in Human Communication Reconsidered by Mathis Koopmans. 1997, Schizophrenia and the Family, Double Bind Theory Revisited by Mathis Koopmans. 2005, Perception in Pose Method UMNG by Dr. Romanov. 2005, Gregory Bateson and Ecological Aesthetics Peter Harris Jones, in, Australian Humanities Reviewers of the following three articles, 2005, Chasing Whales with Bateson and Daniel by Captain Neves Gras Section A, 2005, Pattern, Connection, Desire, in honor of Gregory Bateson by Deborah Bird Rose, 2005, Comments on Deborah Rose and Captain Neves Greca by Mary Catherine Bateson, 2007, Stephen Nachmanovich, Bateson and the Arts, Kybernets, 36 7 8. 2008, Jesper Hofmier, a Legacy for Living Systems, Gregory Bateson as Precursor to Biosemiotics, Berlin, Springer, 2008, Stephen Nachmanovich, It Only a Euro Unregistered Trademark T Mean a Thing If It Alien a Euro Unregistered Trademark T Got That Swing, Bates on a Euro Unregistered Trademark S Epistemology and the Rhythms of Life, Journal of Meaning and Ultimate Reality, 31. 2009, Stephen Nachmanovich, This Is Play, New Literary History, Volume 40. 2010. An Ecology of Mind. A film portrait of Gregory Bateson, produced and directed by his daughter, Nora Bateson. Film website at An Ecology of Mind, A Daughter's Portrait of Gregory Bateson, 2013. Stephen Nachmanovich, A Euro-Oean Old Dinosaur, Gregory Bateson's Ecology of Ideas, 
1980-2012, a Euro Kybernets, 2013, Vol 42-09-10. External links, Book A Recursive Vision, Ecological Understanding and Gregory Bateson by Peter Harris Jones, Book Understanding Gregory Bateson by Noel Charlton, Institute for Intercultural Studies, Six Days of Dying. Essay by Catherine Bateson describing Gregory Bateson's death, Bateson's influence on family therapy. Inside details by Mind for Therapy, movie and website in Ecology of Mind A Daughter's Portrait of Gregory Bateson by Nora Bateson, Gregory Bateson at the Internet Movie Database.